from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Score on Business. Hey, welcome to Score on Business. My name's Pete Hendricks. I'm a serial entrepreneur and your host for today. SCORE is an organization that really wants to see small businesses and entrepreneurs succeed. Our website is scorenashville.org. There are low-cost classes on things like how to write a business plan. Um, there is, is counseling that's available at no charge. There are uh, documents you can download from the website. And also, we do this show and, and try to get content that's useful. So let's get to it. Our first guest is Scott Rouse. And Scott is the founder and CEO at Idea Bang and is a body language expert and analyst. So as a, as, a, as a behavior analyst and body expert, body language expert, sorry about that, That's Scott. Okay. Um, Scott Rouse holds multiple certificates in advanced interrogation training and has been trained alongside the FBI, the Secret Service, U.S. military intelligence, and the Department of Defense. His extensive training, education, and practice of nonverbal communication has made him an expert and consultant to law enforcement, as well as successful CEOs, attorneys, executives, and entertainers. Scott, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having yeah. me. I really appreciate it. So th this is, you, you are able to kind of tell when people are maybe being deceptive or untruthful. And, you know, give us a short overview of what you do. I train people how to be observers of human behavior. Yeah. And then I show them and teach them what to look for, the important things to look for in, be in human behavior. So when they're having a conversation or they're selling something or they're having a meeting, mm -hmm. so they'll know what's happening or what the other person might be thinking, what the other person's intention may be, right. or um, what's going to happen next um, as it relates to the si and in context with mm -hmm. the situation they're in. Right. You know, from if it's for cops, you know, who has, do they have a gun or where are the drugs? And if it's for a salesperson um, or someone buying something, is this person telling me the truth or right. not telling me the truth? Yeah. So it's not all based on, on honesty and dishonesty. Right. It's just fine. It, there's a lot you can tell from yeah. uh, observing the way someone behaves. And so you'll, you'll work with, with uh, companies that are looking at mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. and to try and help them determine whether or not the other side's portraying things correctly. Exactly. Or, or for entrepreneurs that are looking to get funding, they mm -hmm. may have some habits that make it look like they're, you know, not, not, not doing things quite right. Yeah. So you'll help them. Yeah. Good. It's, it's really easy to see what those are because a lot of times, and when it comes to financials, when it comes yeah. to in a pitch, let's say, yeah. they'll do little things that say, that looks like they're saying they're not lying. They're not lying, yeah. they're just not comfortable with the answers because they're right. either the ones that didn't search out the answers, somebody on their, their team yeah. looked at and they're just telling what they are, or they're just not good at numbers and it makes them nervous. Yeah. So be able to spot what those little bitty things are that tell right. you someone's being um, deceptive as compared to someone who's confused or frustrated right. is a pretty big deal. Yeah. You know, in that yeah. world. Okay. So, Specifically, what do you look for when you're trying to decide if someone is being dishonest? Is there one thing that tells you when someone's lying to you? Well, when it comes to body language and human behavior, there's not mm -hmm. one thing that says this person is lying. There's right. one thing that says this person is for sure telling the truth. There are no absolutes. And that's the, yeah. you'll see people on TV uh, and you'll read books that say, ah, oh, he scratched his nose so I know he was lying, or he looked down to the left and I, that means they were lying. There are no studies that prove that yeah. when you scratch your nose, you're not telling the truth, or you're lying, or you're or you're, you're thinking about lying. A lot of times, I have a huge nose, so if I just, you know, I'll hit mine by accident. A lot of times, I'll be goofing with mine. Some people, when they get, they'll start breathing real heavy if they're not, if they're nervous, or not maybe not telling you the truth. So your nose gets dry, and yeah. so you'll mess with it. And it's also part of what's called self-pacification. People do. Mm -hmm. Uh, self-pacification moves like if they get nervous if, if you and I were nervous and I started doing this in the hands you'd be able to tell I was nervous because I'm pacifying myself that's mm -hmm. I'm releasing nervous energy by rubbing on my hand or mm -hmm. or on my mouth or pulling my face or something mm -hmm. as you're talking even though I might be interested in what you have to say if it goes any further than this and I start doing that then I'm, I'm a little bit nervous and maybe mm -hmm. and I'm releasing that nervous energy by pulling on my face or right you know um, 
rubbing myself, yeah. my hands or my face or something. And so do you take a little bit of time to chat with someone before getting down to business to kind of get a baseline? Yeah, yeah, a lot of times it'll happen. If it's, um, for example, if it's a, a law firm mm -hmm. and there's someone that they're not sure about or there's a situation they're not sure about, is this person, as, as they're, if they're defending them or they're helping them with a lawsuit, is this person their, that is their client, are they being honest about everything? Mm -hmm. So what'll happen is they'll, let's say let's meet 10 o'clock and we'll meet wherever it is, and you'll go and I'll show up or you know five six minutes early and the other person is usually there they'll show up early and we'll get in their little conference room or wherever we're supposed to meet they'll just meet be me and that other person they've never met me before I never met them before but the attorney whoever we're supposed to be meeting with will have the you know the assistant come and say he's gonna be 10 15 minutes later mm -hmm. she's gonna be 15 20 minutes late and while we're doing that I can talk to that person and right. talk about colors or numbers and see how they react to specific yeah. things where you're from and maybe try to make them uncomfortable by saying something odd or weird. So I'll see how they right. react to that, you know. And so then after I, after that, and the person comes in, we begin talking, and things go along, you know, things begin to happen. I can tell whether that person is comfortable with what they're saying or uncomfortable yeah. with what they're saying by the way they're looking compared to the way they were looking and, and acting beforehand. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. So if let's say that, that you're meeting with somebody and they, you know, they have a life that's stressful. Mm -hmm. And so there's always some amount of anxiety during the baseline mm -hmm. period, you would see the the things that are natural for them. Right. So that then when you get down to business you can watch for the differences. Right, right. And and yeah. all you're looking for basically is comfort and discomfort. Yeah. That's it. There's there's there are little things that come out of that, but it's it's are they comfortable with what I just said or asked? Or are they dis are they uncomfortable? Are they right. seeing comfort or discomfort? So once you can figure out those little things, that's the the key to starting anyway. Yeah, to yeah, comfort or discomfort. Yeah. Okay. So is there a difference in deception and lying? Yeah, a lot of people will. You see people train people in deception detection, and that's that's valid. I mean, it's valid training. But when it comes to this bold face lying to somebody and then just being deceptive. I like to look at it like um, if someone says, oh, you, may, you know, you, I'm sure maybe you know people, have an uncle or something that has that horrible comb over. It's like, you know, <laughs> like a hundred hairs, but they're all, you know, pulled over. And, they all come, come yeah. over. So you know that there's, that he's bald. Yeah. He knows he's bald. Yeah. But you're not saying, hey, you're bald, <laughs> you know. And he, so he's not lying to you, yeah. really. He's being deceptive. Yeah. There's a little, you know, or, or for example, when when a, um, an attractive woman comes by and you see him, guys will always go, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah. What's, what's up, lady? <laughs> you too. So, and we're not being deceptive by sucking our gut and going, yeah. "Hey, what's up?" Lowering our voice. But I mean, we're not lying, but we're being deceptive, like right. I'm, like cooler. I'm, yeah. You know, I really, I'm so cool. So and then they go away and you relax back to, "Huh, okay, what's going on?" So you're not lying to him, but you're being a little bit deceptive. Yeah. And the lie is more of, no, I didn't, when you actually did do something, you know, the full on. Right. Know. So deception may not, well, I guess there, there are degrees in all of this, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Oh, yeah. 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 So when, when, I'm trying to think of a couple of, of scenarios. Let's say that a, um, let's say that an entrepreneur has a prospective vendor mm -hmm. calling on them. Okay. And the, the representative, which will probably be a salesperson, um, is pro, it has asked questions and uncovered some need or some pain. Mm -hmm. And the, the salesperson is 90% sure that they can get something, but have a little bit of nervousness because mm -hmm. what if it doesn't go right? So they're not, right. they're, they have some healthy nervousness, but they also are, it's not like they're trying to fleece them or anything. Right. What would, what would you, could you comment on that situation? Yeah. What you, a lot of times when you have someone that's selling you something, like a, like a, a car dealer from a used car, a lot of, you know, little Bobby's used cars or something. As soon as that guy walks out, you're thinking, ah, here we go. You yeah. don't trust them, so you're, you're ready not to trust them or what they say. Yeah. You're not trusting them. 
So there are things to look for in a situation where somebody's, you're, it's more finessed. Like if you and I are talking, all of a sudden I try to sell you, this is just a fantastic, I don't know if you've used yeah. those before, yeah. but, and tried to sell it to you. So you, as we talked we, we're, and we're getting to know each other, maybe it would be a lot easier for me to at least approach the sales part of that. Right. But if I wasn't being honest and this was just a prop, you know, and, and I knew it and knew it didn't work and all that, you'd see little things of, of me being unsure about that. If um, while I'm selling this to you or I'm trying to get you to, to be into it, what I would look for from you is I'd look for things that say, I disagree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things to look for is in the mouth. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're talking to someone on a, in a business situation, you're going to look here, here, and here. That's mm -hmm. a that's little place you're going to look. Now, in a social situation, you're going to look more your eyes and then your mouth, that mm -hmm. section there. So if I'm looking up here and then I start looking down at your mouth and your eyes, that means I'm feeling more of a social thing happening. And when that happens, if I see as I'm trying to explain this to you, as I'm trying to get you in that social mode, and I see this a lot, on, on one, your lips just purse. Yeah. And I go, that means, or that use that suggests that you may not agree with what I'm saying, mm -hmm. or it may bring up a memory from some right. other time where somebody's trying to sell you a monitor yeah. that it didn't go well. But that's those little things of, of, of disagreement or they don't like the discomfort, they don't like okay. the, that kind of thing. Yeah, so Scott, the, you have recently published an ebook, mm -hmm. and there's no charge for it, and it's flying off the internet. How can folks get that? Well, the, if you go to scottrouse.com, okay. S-C-O-T-T-R-O-U-S-E.com, just up there on the right, it's called, um, uh, the, the idea is it's the five tools nobody else in the uh, meeting will have. Right. Uh, but it's called, um, inside my body language briefcase. Okay. So it's got a little guy holding the, this man holding the briefcase. But it's it's free for, it's going to be free for a little while longer, not a okay. lot longer. But yeah, it's, the, it's well, going. Well, then I'm going to go home and get it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so. Okay. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 